and we got there at 7.15. It was packed. You would think it was the middle of the afternoon or absolutely packed. Now, we did manage to get some photos, but if you're here visiting, I suggest if you want to see the Trevi Fountain without the crowds and get some photos, you're going to have to get there at 6.30 or even 6 a.m. Because then you might say, oh, I'll go in the evening. But then in the evening, you don't have the light, so you're missing out on the quality of photos. So that's my first uh, pro tip for you. I've already mentioned that on some of my social media uh, profiles. And I'll include some of those pictures of what it looked like 7.15 a.m. on August 14th when we were there visiting. And you'll find those in the show notes. And yeah, by the way, definitely after you listen to the podcast episode, go to the show notes because there you'll find photos and links and other important things that uh, you'll want to check out and connections into my Substack weekly newsletter, which I hope you would consider becoming a subscriber. So let's get back to the monuments. So we did the Trevi Fountain, and then we did the Pantheon, and then we did Piazza Navona, and then we did the Spanish Steps. Those were all our early morning trips. And then we visited lots of other things as well and did some shopping. But the question is, how do these things get maintained? Because you look at the Trevi Fountain, and it's white and sparkly marble and in great shape, and you just wonder, how's it maintained? Well, in the case of the Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps, we have benefactors, patrons, if you wish. And I wrote a really lengthy Substack newsletter all about the patronage of some of Rome's important sites that really require money to upkeep. So the Spanish steps were redone by Bulgari, and the Trevi Fountain was restored by Fendi, the Italian designer. So what about some of the other monuments? One, for example, that we went to and visited in the early morning is the gorgeous Pantheon, which is really probably my favorite monument in all of Rome. Now, up until last summer, that was a monument that you could visit without paying anything. And there was no entity who contributed to the restoration of this beautiful monument. And it takes a lot of money for the upkeep. So last summer, it was decided that you would have to pay a minimal fee to go to the Pantheon. And a lot of people protested and said, wow, you know, that's free. Why do we have to pay for it now? But the fact of the matter is that Rome, the Eternal City, is a treasure trove of historic monuments and ancient ruins. And it boasts a staggering array of fountains, statues, palazzi, and archaeological sites, and each with a testament to a rich, multifaceted history. But maintaining these relics of the past is a monumental task that comes with an equally monumental cost. In recent years, budget constraints and the economic fallout from the pandemic have exacerbated these challenges, which has compelled the city to explore innovative funding solutions. So among the solutions found are corporate sponsorships, Many are designers, as I mentioned um, in the case of the Trevi Fountain and the Spanish Steps, and then the introduction of entrance fees for some of the most visited sites, like my favorite monument, the Pantheon. So I've lived here for four decades now, and I've often wondered how the city manages to cover the maintenance and restoration of this magnificent monument, the Pantheon, up until now. Maintaining cultural heritage in Italy is a complex endeavor with responsibilities shared between the central government, the city of Rome, and other public institutions 
such as the Fondo Ambiente Italiano, which is a national trust that restores and maintains heritage sites. But even still, despite the collective effort, the scale of preservation required in Rome demands innovative approaches to funding. So corporate sponsorship is a modern patronage technique that kind of goes back to the way monuments were maintained in the past, and that's patronage. One of the most notable and recent initiatives was an agreement with Confindustria, a national association of thousands of Italian companies. And this partnership aims to facilitate acts of patronage and sponsorship for various monuments in need of funds. So projects under this scheme include kind of modest restorations, like a 230,000 euro restoration for the Neptune fountain in Piazza Navona. And then you get into the more ambitious undertakings, like the 70 million euros required for the maintenance of Rome's ancient walls, and $200 million for the upkeep of large public parks like Villa Borghese and Villa Doria Pamfili. Now, what do corporate sponsors get out of this? Well, they benefit from these arrangements by gaining the right to display their logos on site and in publicity materials. So that creates a mutually beneficial relationship between the public and private sectors. I mentioned, for example, luxury fashion brands like Fendi, Bulgari, and Todd's that have funded major restoration projects in recent years. So Fendi contributed 2.2 million euros to restore the Trevi Fountain. Bulgari spent about 1.5 million on the Spanish Steps. And Todd's paid $25 million for the Coliseum's extensive renovation. This resurgence of private sponsorship mirrors historic patterns of patronage. In the 15th century, the House of Medici funded significant works of art and architecture, including St. Peter's Basilica, as well as funding and supporting the careers of artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. And similarly, the Flavian dynasty, which commissioned the Colosseum in the first century AD, used such products to bolster their popularity and legacy. There's kind of mixed views on the role of corporate sponsorship. Some people celebrate it, others criticize it. Proponents argue that private funding is essential for the continued maintenance of these historical sites, especially in the face of dwindling public funds. And they point out that many of Rome's most iconic landmarks might have deteriorated further without such support. Let's take the Colosseum, for example. I mean, that involved cleaning over 10,000 square meters of travertine surfaces, filling cracks, and restoring 1,200 square meters of iron gates and parapets. The extensive work funded by Todd's has been crucial in preserving the structural integrity and aesthetic appeal of this nearly 2,000-year-old amphitheater. But on the other hand, critics say that the commercialization and potential privatization of public heritage isn't necessarily a good thing. And they argue that corporate sponsorship can lead to unsightly ads and a perception that the public sphere is for sale. And they also fear that these kinds of sponsorship and patronage arrangements might prioritize profit over preservation. And then let's get back to the idea of entrance fees rather than patronage. And that's what happened with the Pantheon, as I mentioned, where an entrance fee was added last summer, even though it's only five euros. Now, the Pantheon was built between 118 and 125 AD. 
and it has withstood the test of time due to the 